Hello and good afternoon. This is Andy from the RSL Show on KSL Sports. We recorded this episode minutes prior to Pablo Ruiz putting out a statement that his season is over with an injury. And so that is not discussed. It's not recapped in this conversation between myself, Josh Clark, and Alex Napolis of the RSL Show. So just want to give you guys a, a heads up for context, but enjoy the latest episode of the RSL Show and we'll be back. Uh, with more commentary, more news, more updates on Pablo Ruiz. Thanks for listening to the RSL Show. Hello and welcome to a brand new episode of the RSL Show. This is Andy Munoz. We got Alex Napolis and Joshua Clark. We're here to discuss Real Salt Lake's latest victory over LAFC, Orange Ball, Snow Game. Let's get right into it. Alex, how are you, and what would you like to cover today? Dude, I am doing good, um, and I think the only things that I have are obviously the match against LAFC, and maybe a little Open Cup talk because there's been a lot of there's been news about that coming out. Hmm. All right, Josh, what's up, dude? How are you, and what would you like to cover today? Uh, we'll just cover uh, old Burhalter. <clears throat> crying about it mm. that's all i want to talk about <laughs> heck yeah dude i love that uh i'm andy munoz and i'd like to cover the winner of the kit we had a really successful campaign to uh get you guys a signed kit and uh, we went to great lengths to bring you a really cool prize from the rsl show the only podcast that's given out a signed kit team i believe ever uh we delivered big and we announced the winner and uh we'll talk about that a little bit more but let's go ahead and rewind a little bit back to saturday a day where the weather did its utah thing and just disrupted uh the beautiful weather that we were having started off with a hailstorm a little bit of wetness and then it just went into a full-on drizzle with a little bit of lightning and thunder alex you were at the stadium tell us uh what was that experience like and how did you guys react to the delays it was it was interesting um because you know we even like started our radio talk at 11 because we thought the match was going to start at noon and then halfway through our pregame show we find out that the game is delayed by two hours and we had people like coming in and like saying hey this might be delayed this might be delayed but you know there was no concrete answer and then I think maybe at 1130, we found out that, oh, the gates aren't even open yet. We're going to actually push this game to two o'clock. Mm. A lot of fun delays. I think I had read or had seen, I don't know how true it is, but there was a fan that was going back and forth between the delays and then ended up, ended up missing the entire match because they fell asleep in their car or something. I don't know if that's true or not, but there was a lot of, uh, yeah, just a lot of back and forth. Um not getting clear answers on how long the delay was. Uh, what was crazy is the the lightning strike literally in the third minute when the match did finally kick up. And uh, it, it was just a freak storm, in my opinion. Lightning, thunder, snow. Uh, of course, that takes us to an orange ball match, which we have had really good luck with. Uh, I personally love the orange ball. I wish we could play with it every home match, but... Josh, fill us in a little bit about the orange match ball superstition, and would you like to see more of it, not only when it's incremental weather? Uh, I mean, obviously, we have a fairly decent record with the orange ball, so it's kind of something we look forward to in a weird way. Um, as far as more orange ball games, like, no, I'm I'm good. Uh, those games suck. I think one a year is, is fine, uh, but, you know, for some any fans out there listening, uh, RSL fan or not, they make orange balls for a reason, um, and that's because every game can't be seventy and sunny. So, yeah, like the, it's a ball that's made for snow, quite literally. So it can be seen. So the manufacturers make it because soccer plays in snow all around the world. I think the yeah. even the technical term for it is high visibility ball. Yes. 
Hmm. You will learn something new on the RSL show every episode. Yeah, I, I don't know if you guys know, but you know it snows in Europe and they play through the winter. Um, so yeah. yeah, orange ball. So let's talk about that. Let's let's kind of get right into the most interesting topic of probably the entire episode is uh, LAFC coaching staff had some words. Uh, a lot of fans around the league had some words. Uh, a lot of content going viral uh, over the opinion that this match shouldn't have been played or that it was an unfair advantage. And so I kind of want both of you guys to weigh in on that. Josh, you're the most heated on this topic, dude. So what do you have to say about comments flowing in? I mean, I wouldn't say heated, but it, it just goes to show how soft uh, L.A. can be. Like, honestly, you, you can see the weather reports, right? You can literally Google what the weather is going to be like. Everyone else has played in the snow. I, I, I don't for their fans to be going off and like every team that isn't in California should have a dome. Like just shut up. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And their traveling contingent, they stayed for what? 10 minutes mm-hmm. and they dipped like, I, I don't know. It's just, it's, it's such an easy like excuse for me when in, in at the end of the day, you just didn't show up to play. Right. Inclement weather just threw you off your game. And that to me says that you're kind of a soft team. And then for your coach to go out and say, oh, we shouldn't have played. It's a, blah, blah, blah. Just shut up, dude. Just we played. Deal with it. RSL played and they seemed to just like they were just as miserable, but they played. Yeah. I and I don't think there's, you know, I don't know. I uh, We've been to a few trainings, but I, don't, I can't recall a training where uh, they went outside and trained in snow voluntarily. Right. So it, it kind of strengthens, strengthens the fact that, yeah, both teams have to play in this. Uh, at least that was the rebuttal from a lot of the Real Salt Lake fans. Um, and so I just want to hear what Alex's thoughts are as well, too. Do you think that there's any sustenance in uh, what LAFC was saying? Should it have been rescheduled? Should it have been a match that was... Yeah, ultimately, you just played on a different day. No, and think I think about it this way: if the result was reversed and LAFC got a three nothing win in the snow against RSL, we wouldn't have we wouldn't even be having this conversation. It's it's the fact that LAFC showed up in the snow and didn't want to play in the snow, and were run through by Real Salt Lake in that first half. Wow. All right. I mean, like we're not a bunch of yetis, right? Practicing in the snow all winter long. Like <laughs> this is a team full of international players that have never played in the snow before. Yet their mentality from the coach. Yeah, I know you're going to correct me, but most of them have not played in the snow before. No, no, I'm, I'm just going to say Andres Gomez had never played in the snow ever. Right. So that tells me that Pablo's mindset going into this was, listen, we're going to play no matter what. We're going to be tough and we're going to grit it out. And Berhal, not Berhalter, Sharundalo <laughs> was probably like, oh, we're probably just going to, you know, head back home to LA today. So whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. There are a lot of, I mean, there's so much news covering this topic of should this match have been played? Uh, a lot of, a lot of uh, spins on what Chirundolo said. I, I'm looking at a CNN article right now. The headline is LAFC head coach condemns. MLS game played in heavy snow as a quote, absolute disgrace. And if you guys are curious as to what Steve Terundolo actually said, uh, here it is. It was not difficult conditions or impossible conditions. An absolute joke that we had to play today. Not safe for the players. One of the worst professional sporting events I've ever seen in my life. I feel terrible for the players. We put them through this. The game could have and should have been called many times beforehand. I mean, does he not pay attention to every other snow match that happens throughout the league every year? I guarantee he played in a couple as a player, too. Guaranteed. I think yeah. people on Twitter are saying that he did when he was in Germany. Right. He absolutely did if he played in Germany. So, like, yeah. for him to just be using this as an excuse, it's pathetic, dude. It's No, 100%. It's, it's bad professionalism and poor sportsmanship. Just I to hear, admit you got your ass kicked in the here, snow. Yep. Here's how he wrapped up the statement. 
you prepare all week for obviously normal conditions. You prepare teams for certain tactics. And when it gets that crazy and that unplayable, nothing you do in preparation matters. It just baffles me that we would put players through this. Okay. So the U.S. men's national team should never play through it again. Columbus, SKC, Toronto, Minnesota, New York, New England. Every team in Europe should just never play in the snow again because it's not optimal conditions. NFL should never play in the snow, right? Like, get over it, dude. And honestly, it's – I know people say it's not very entertaining. It's very entertaining. I enjoy the hell out of it. So, <laughs> yeah. Let I mean, LAFC be LAFC. Who cares? If they want to cry, cry. At the end of I the mean, day, whatever. According to this article, CNN contacted MLS for comment on Terundolo's remarks. Uh, there was another quote in here. I didn't even watch the game. The last 20 minutes, you couldn't see anything. It's, it's true. <laughs> it's <laughs> crazy, man. It's crazy that you have a head coach saying this or or doubling down on the conditions being a factor. Obviously, yeah, it's a factor, but you could handle this loss with a little bit of grace, and you can say that, yeah, it ultimately affects the match. Um, but, you know, hey, it's on the road. It's, it's tough conditions. We're not used to playing in this. And I would hope that, you know, the, the fans could see this back home, that this is it's a free game. But to go yeah. out and just throw the league under the bus and throw maybe the uh, – yeah, I guess that would be it, right? You're throwing the league under the bus because you're asking for a cancellation or a reschedule. That's pretty low, man. That's pretty and low. You're downplaying what the other team did, right? Like a simple statement would have been, you know, RSL gritted it out today. We struggled in the snow. It was a wild game. The weather was unfortunate. Carry on. Yeah. You know, and I think from my understanding was that both teams met before the gates opened at America First Field. And they were asked, would you rather play, basically asked, would you rather play in the wind or would you rather play in the snow? And both teams decided to delay the game. So they knew, he knew the snow was coming. Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, there was everyone that whole... did. Everyone, there was the bag policy that came out. And everyone's like, it's going to snow. How are we going to bring our jackets in? The snow was no surprise to anybody. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Except, obviously, Steve Sherundaloo. Yeah. Unless he won, then he wouldn't have cared. <laughs> I don't know. It's just, it's, it's, it's poor form for me. I, it's, I lose a lot of respect for the guy. It's, yeah, it's, it's literally just, finding an excuse of losing plain right. and simple plain and simple well, and then it, it brings out the whole you know we're lafc blah, blah 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 nothing can go wrong for us type mentality and like attitude that the whole league finds gross right yeah, yeah. not if you're an lafc fan <laughs> well of course not but right um credit to pablo though pablo handled it well i mean obviously coming over a three over like a three over um three points yeah three points and and three goals over lafc um you know he's quoting saying it wasn't either for it wasn't easy for either team so just a real credit to the players and the mindset to not allow circumstances beyond their control to affect them uh to alex's point a lot of players haven't played in snow and Having been someone personally who has played in snow, is it cold? Yes. Is it uncomfortable? Yes. But when you're warm and you're running around, you can hardly really feel the cold. Uh, who I would actually probably feel bad for the most is probably the goalkeepers mm-hmm. um, having to stay stagnant in one <laughs> spot, just getting poured on. So, yeah, I mean, Literally, overall. As a like to that point, like I played goalkeeper in high school. There were games that we had to shovel our field before we played. Right. Like, I don't know why this whole playing in snow is such a freaky concept for for some people. Yeah. Yeah. So overall, uh, just a. A cool match to witness. Uh, I was kind of bummed out that there were no snowballs thrown. Uh, Yeah. I think snow angels, though. Plenty of snow snow angels. Yeah. Plenty of snow angels. So let's break that down next. Um, Let's start off with the uh, starting 11. Um, We'll just go down the list here real quick. Uh, A debut for tree or matt crooks uh but let's break this down so you got arango up top you got luna crooks gomez ojeda and nelly in the mid and then you've got brody glad silva hidalgo on the defense and zach 
McMath. So what are you guys' uh, thoughts going into that starting 11? And uh, did it seem promising at the time when you guys saw that up? Yeah, that's, that's a good 11 for me. It's a, it is. It is. It is. A, it is a good eleven. My bad. <laughs> it is a good eleven, and um, I think the biggest surprise for me was continuing to have a mecca in the middle of the park and not having Ruiz on the field, which also yeah, makes think, sense coming off of injury. But, yeah, I was gonna say. Do you think that's more of a coming off injury thing, or do you think that's a mecca's playing really well thing? Maybe a little bit of both. Maybe maybe it's a Pablo is seeing Emeka's performance and knowing Ruiz is still coming off injury. He trusts more to ease Ruiz back in. That that's kind of where I'm leaning. That and Ruiz still hasn't necessarily played in that position. He's been forward more. He's been playing that ten more. But now that Crooks is there, you get you give that opportunity for Ruiz to kind of sit back and and learn a little bit of the new instructions that these pivots are going to be doing in the midfield in the new system that Pablo wants to play. And so you're just allowing Pablo a little bit of opportunity to kind of get familiar with that role. Absolutely, yeah. I do. I do think uh, you know Gomez did have his two goals and assists or whatever. But in my opinion, Anelli was absolutely the man of the match. Him and Ojeda barring the red card but yeah that midfield was solid do you want to elaborate a little bit man like what did you what did you like out of those two just uh from the match if you're gonna claim that you know man of the match what what stood out to you they just they controlled everything right they they stopped lafc's attacks they were wherever they needed to be at whatever time they needed to be there right defensively offensively uh, just breaking up plays. Just they were just everywhere. They were beasts. It's exactly what you want to see out of your central midfielders. A lot of good forward passing, especially in the in the elements. Right, you don't want to be relying on going back per se when the ball's going to die on you. So no, they just they were just solid for me. Now, one thing to kind of point out is uh, this is a uh, I believe it's a different LAFC. I would say. I mean, you still got some elements in Bawanga, Atuesta. Ily Sanchez, Tillman, um, and that really kind of sums up the the players that are that have the most familiarity. Obviously, a, a key component. I know Vela is, is. There's a lot of rumors of him just being out and going to a different club. Uh, San Jose Earthquakes is what he's linked to. I don't know if anything new has come out, but did we face? I, I mean, obviously the element and the snow and everything, right? It's going to change up a lot of factors, but. Uh, do you feel like this was LAFC's best, a, a strong LAFC, or is this kind of like a rebuild phase LAFC? I think LAFC is definitely in a weird limbo, right? They're light on their roster, but they're still a dangerous team. Like if if the weather was nice, this conversation is probably a lot different, right? Could probably still beat them, but it's it's a lot different. And you even saw glimpses of it in the second half from LAFC where they kind of started to to figure it out a bit. Mm -hmm. Um, but I definitely don't think it's LAFC of the past. No. And after losing as many players as you did in the off season, it's going to be hard to kind of replicate what you've been doing the last couple of years until they bring in players to replace, um, that talent that they have lost. But even in a match like this, like even before the snow started to get really, really bad and really started accumulating on the field, like Danny Bawanga really didn't do much. And I think that's a big credit to Hidalgo, who's kind of been an underrated, unsung player this season so far. He, he did a good job um, at, at St. Louis, and I think on Saturday he did a fantastic job of limiting Bawanga. Hmm. Yeah, I, I agree, man. It's, uh, like I said, and I think to Josh's point too, um, if you have different conditions, it's still a scary team, right? It's always going to be LAFC. You always have to kind of look out and be ready. But this, this whole match was different. Uh, the ball played differently, clearly, obviously you got to put a little bit more into your pass. If you want to get it to where it goes, uh, sometimes you might pass and, and the ball just goes dead. It just stops. It slows the game down a lot. And I know we're going to obviously talk about, uh, Carlos Andres Gomez and how much, uh, of a match he had and an impact that he had. But one thing for me where I, I think, might have helped him in this game is that the the game was forced to kind of slow down. He's usually just like a a speeding bullet, just bouncing off everywhere. 
a super high speed. But I remember commenting during the match, I think it was to Josh, that <laughs> the, the the ball moving a little bit slower. And obviously we, we saw the like the bursts of energies that would lead to the goal. I kind of feel like that slowing down and just having a few more seconds to think uh, really impacted this game. So do you guys agree with that? Do you feel like the game got slowed down and you had to maybe be more tactical uh, all around with it? Absolutely. Right. You have to, you really have to pick out your passes. Um, you have to do a lot more work judging the flight of the ball, you know, how the ball is going to land. There's so much to it. Right. So it really does slow the game down, but in a lot of ways, it's a good thing. Yeah. And we were just talking the last show about Gomez and his decision-making. And so I think having the snow a little bit, slowing things down a little bit for him, probably helped them out a lot in in making those those decisions Mm -hmm. and then obviously you know the the first goal is uh, a great goal right Uh, Gomez gets the break the defender goes down and I don't know if that's going to happen if there's no snow on the on the ground Uh, but do you feel like again snow is a factor what we're just I'm going to stop saying that but do you think defenders going down and losing their footing. Do you think that's going to happen in a match with no snow? I, I feel like there was like a lot of defensive mistakes. Sure. Um, but a lot of it, if if you pressure them appropriately, right, that's where the mistakes come from. But the bigger thing to me is, is not only did he force that mistake, which is what you want. He finished, right? He finished the opportunity, which is what we've been seeing a lack of. So that's the more important part to me. Yeah. And then for the majority of the game, Gomez was just terrorizing Omar uh, Campos, Ocampos on the left um, left wing. He, young 21-year-old Mexican, just coming over. I think this is like his third game in the league and obviously in poor conditions for him. And I think Gomez just 100% took advantage of that. He had Campos on skates the entire match. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, we pointed this out and we got confirmation in the post presser. I remember watching the match with Josh and just saying, dude, Gomez looks like he's having fun out there. It looks like a, a dude for the first time in snow ever. Uh, so there were a lot of comments made like that, right? Um, it looks like a kid just having fun and finding his footing and just having an all out snow day in, in recess. That's what it seemed like. Mm-hmm. Um, <laughs> that was like recess play. So he confirmed that he said he was having a lot of fun. And, uh, you know, I think a match like this where LAFC has maybe put their guard down, uh, maybe they don't want to play in it. Uh, they're upset that they even have to be there. Obviously, Chirundolo being the head coach and just having a negative attitude, it's going to translate to your roster. But um, that's what was so fun about this match is seeing the guys having fun and seeing the impact uh, that it had on their attitudes. And it just led m- to more chances. And it, it, it genuinely looked like they had fun. Would you guys agree with that? Yeah, it's it's one of those games. Like, it it honestly reminded me of when, you know, we would all get together back in the day and play in the snow as well. Like, it really kind of brings you together and creates some fun memories that you wouldn't have. So, it, in reality, it's a great team bonding experience, right? You got through that together, right? it'll do something for you as a team. Go back and just watch Marcelo Silva the entire game. And that just encapsulates literally the entire Arsenal roster. And I think that made a huge difference as into the result. All the RSL players were out there having fun. They looked mm-hmm. excited. They were slipping and sliding in the snow. Marcelo was just throwing everything in tackles because of the snow. And it was, it was fun. They looked like they were having a great time. Whereas the other side, the LAFC side, they looked miserable throughout the entire 90 minutes. Yeah. They had their face covers on and just looked (laughs) lost and disinterested. And if, if you're disinterested in playing, you're going to get beat. I don't care how good you are. Yeah. Yeah. So no, it's just, I think this is going to be a memorable match, just like the last snow match. And Josh, like the time that we went and played with our friends in the snow match, like we've played so many soccer matches, but the one that we had in the snow, like to me, those were like the best memories. I remember that day clearly. Yep. Uh, and and the photos we took, so that was a lot of fun. Um, cool. So let's uh, let's talk about you know you guys kind of or actually Josh, you alluded to Anelli just doing some incredible things in this match for you, kind of sticking out as the man of the match. 
Um, Alex, I kind of want to hear your opinions. Um, Anelli's already been highlighted, and you know it might be Gomez for you, but I want you to pick um, a, a player who stood out to you. It could be a player, it could be a duo, and uh, just just tell me what you liked most about um, maybe the Lincoln and play, or or who stood out to you as as uh, having like a, a a better match, I guess. I think for me in this one, it has to be Silva. Um, mm. A guy who kind of lost his spot at the end of last season, didn't really see the field much to end last season, didn't see the field at all in the first two matches so far this year. You come in and you put him in a situation where you're playing against Danny Bawanga and LAFC, and they're going to be dangerous on the attack. And I thought he, he took the opportunity to kind of say, hey, I'm still here and I can still fight for this spot. I thought there was chances where, in the, especially in the first half, where there was just a barrage of attack from LAFC. Zach McMath was forced into some good saves, but I think Marcelo Silva also stepped up very well uh, in those situations to to mitigate the opportunities from LAFC. Mm. Awesome. I agree, man. Uh, it's it, it's For me, it was the first time that I had seen a, a well-rounded uh, roster and everybody contributing because... Like Josh said, Anelli's got his moments. Ojeda's got his moments. Um, clearly, Gomez had his moments. Chicho had his moments. Luna said Crooks had his moments. Yeah, Crooks had his moments. McMath had his moments. I think you can honestly say this is just a very complete team performance. Yeah. Yes. Now, the only thing that concerns me is, you know, we have this collective team performance in the snow. Can we translate that to, you know, to two matches with great conditions, right? I know it's still early on in the season, but um, the roster is showing a lot of promise for me. I don't know how you guys are feeling about it. Yeah, yeah, I think it is looking good. Again, I'm still concerned about depth in certain areas, but uh, I think you can absolutely take this performance and build on it, right? Especially going into another home game against Colorado, who, you know, doesn't look great, but they are a new improved side. They could be hungry to beat RSL. So it, it's a good test against maybe not a league powerhouse to really build on your last performance, right? Tree got – not I don't like the nickname Tree. I'm just going to throw that out there. It just it, – it doesn't flow for me. So Crooks uh, got to have some more time with, you know, Luna and Chicho and Gomez. And, and to have that be like your first home game with them and to have to learn how to link up in adverse conditions – and, and take some chances. I mean, Crooks had some decent chances as well. So I think, you know, if we see decent conditions on Saturday, he could have himself a game. Any of them really could have a game. So, yeah, I think we're going to be able to build on this pretty well. It's 100% a confidence builder because not only do you take the the curse off your back of not being able to beat LAFC a little bit, now you beat them twice in a row. And you finally get it done at home. Uh, you win a home opener. A lot. There's so much here in this one to continue to build confidence off of, and I think you're, we're going to see a very confident RSL heading into that Colorado match. We Agreed. better anyway. Agreed. No, I'm excited, man. And you know, you got to think too, um, <laughs> Alex. Just think to back to uh, your your travel back from Miami and how exhausting that is. So to have. You know, be fresh off of a win, be at home, be here with your family, not having to travel, going fresh into Colorado. Uh, I I think, and listen, this was technically the home opener, but if we look at the stands uh, from the highlights or Alex, like what you observed there at the stadium, probably less than a quarter of the seats filled. Uh, I think that this Colorado match this is probably going to be our actual true home opener um, full stadium. If the conditions are permitting, I'm going to look up the weather right now, but that's, what's got me excited is we have a great squad, great confidence. LAFC is probably one of your more uh, opponents that you look at the, the, the schedule and you're more worried about. They're already out of the way Their Their box is checked off. We got three points. Now we're going to Colorado or excuse me, Colorado's coming here. But to Josh's point, you know, you don't want to let your guard down. But I feel like if these guys keep up the momentum, we can pull a really good result at home. Yeah. And honestly, you know, uh, a home opener win is a great way to start off the season. Getting that home record right. You know what I mean? Yeah. And I think I think in this one, you have to 
Arsenal has to go out and get three points against Colorado. Not only because it's Colorado, not only because it's the Rocky Mountain Cup, but Arsenal doesn't play in two weeks because they already played their extra game. They played an extra game on Wednesday in that San Juan match against Inter Miami. So you get the three points against Colorado. You're gonna. It's. I know it's a little early to be table looking, but you're gonna be looking pretty heading into that bye. Absolutely, man. And you know what? For me. I'm looking at the weather here, and there's a few things here. So, Saturday, uh, the weather is looking like the following. So, uh, 48 degrees high, not ideal. Uh, 36 degrees uh, for the lows. But it looks like it'll be cloudy skies. A few flurries or snow showers possible. So, nothing on our radar that's going to say that we're going to get absolutely dumped on. Uh, but I feel like the conditions are going to be pretty, pretty nice. Still, I wouldn't even say an advantage over Colorado because we tend to kind of share the same type of weather. Uh, but also looking at the uh, schedule, to your point, um, let's see. LAFC, we, we got them off our backs, three points, which is amazing, dude. I, I'm i just I'm going to say the LAFC fans are just like my least favorite fans in the league. I think over SKC, man, like – the entitlement there and the early MLS cup, like just, and the way they're treating Carlos Vela, bro. No, I'm kidding. I, I, I know they love Vela, but still, um, anyway, so March 9th, Salt Lake, Colorado, that's going to be a late game, 7 30 PM. And then you're right. Uh, the match after is going to be away, but that's not going to happen until the 23rd of March, uh, versus Vancouver versus uh, good old Demir. Which I'm going to. Are you going to that match? Yes, sir. Oh, amazing. Incredible. Um, so, yeah, I mean, there's there's a lot of excitement in the air and there's a lot to uh, prepare for. Um, and I'm looking forward to a two-week break, two-week rest, just as the season is kicking up. I think you might be the only one. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I need some I need some soccer, man. Yeah. I don't like, I don't like early bye weeks, but... It is what it is, and we're not going to complain about it. Cool. Hey, what else do we want to cover before we wrap this show up? Anything else uh, on the radar as far as news or rumors or drama? Or do we want to look at the first couple uh, results around the league? Do you guys even like that, that we talk about the results around the league? Does it matter? Are you, are you talking to me or the fans? To both of you guys. I mean, yeah, I don't mind it. I like, I like to it. look at the I like to look at the results because I like to see whether or not SKC is just getting creamed, and or, uh, or what version of Miami came out and played. Yeah, actually, goodness. So let's, go, let's go ahead and pull up that real quick. Let's go over MLS schedule and scores. I'm gonna pull this up real fast. And remember, guys, if you guys want to hang out with us on YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, we're all over. Uh, at RSL show, come check us out. Uh, we're trying to do all of the cool things. Uh, real quick, while I try and kill some time, uh, we want to congratulate Lexi, uh, the Real Salt Lake jersey winner. Uh, Lexi, we went into great depths into getting that signed. Uh, for those who are curious, was it random? Uh, yes, absolutely. Uh, even with one dude putting in literally a thousand entries uh he he didn't even make top three on the random list so it goes to show you could do five entries or you could do a thousand you still might be a winner and i just want to shout out real quick um alex took that kit out to miami uh we got it signed by at the time just chicho and anderson julio and it was only two and we decided as a podcast that we needed more signatures. And so then we sent Alex's sister to training uh, to get the collective uh, remaining uh, signatures on there. And Alex, like how confident are you that almost every roster member is on that kit? Everybody but Vera signed it. <laughs> Dang. Even Katranis? Oh, okay, sorry. I forgot about Katranis. Shoot. Everybody but Vera and Katranis. Even Kaliskan signed it. Wow. Yeah. Wow. Wow. So that, okay. honestly, guys, that's going to be a piece of history. 
uh, not only from the RSL show because we took it all the way to Miami for the match versus Messi. It was in the same vicinity, right? Um, I want to say this, actually. Chicho, when he was signing that kit, he had Messi's kit in his other hand. So literally rubbing jerseys, <laughs> okay, if, if, if you care at all about that. But just a really cool collector's item. Um, that is something that we're so happy that we could get done for you guys and, and work with the collaboration at the club. Shout out Delmi Barrias. Um, we're always trying to do right by you guys and, and make some fun stuff. Listen, uh, the scores, I'm struggling uh, to pull them up. Uh, we don't have to go over the results around the league. It is let's, a little bit let's just early. Let's just go over uh, Miami pumping Orlando. 5-0, my guy. Yeah. Yeah, man. Luis Suarez uh, finally catching some some heat. I believe he had, what, two goals and maybe an assist? Yep. Yeah. And, a, and another goal that was offside. So. Yeah, that team's going to be a team to be, you know, messed with i guess well the, the crazy part is orlando is a a favorite right yeah they're an mls cup favorite and they just got pumped my thing with miami i don't think they're going to do that week in week out i think we're going to see a lot of spurts in miami they're going to get tired they're going to get injured they're going to kind of go down and then they're going to get healthy and shoot right back up it, it's going to be a very roller coaster like season for miami i think that- i just don't know dude i i don't know i don't know if i agree with that because it's you've got like the best of the best playing together. I don't think that you know. Sure, they they might be plagued by like a an injured team member who may not have a big impact. I mean, I don't know. It's it's hard. I don't want to say that, but you've got some true talent over there, man. And and regardless of their age and all that, I think their experience just trumps anything that would really throw a wrench. Like a, a big wrench would be like, okay, Messi's not playing a few matches. Right. But that's what I'm talking about. If, if Suarez or Messi really go down with anything, they're, they're instantly a hundred times less dangerous. Yeah. You know, I, I know that. And you I know? think, so they just dumped a hundred or uh, 1.5 million in salary today. And they're just going to bring in more players. Yeah. Dude. There's already talks about some young Paraguayan coming through, and who wouldn't want to come there? Dude? They're stacked. You want to? Well, you know, you know, Yedlin is just so sad he got traded. Yeah, you I think know. it's a good fit for Yedlin, though. No, it definitely is, but it it would be hard for anyone to be like, oh, I can't play with Messi anymore. I got traded away on from the Messi team. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, especially after like <laughs> Messi gave him the captain's armband and had yeah. him the trophy, all those cool memories. At least he got that though, honestly. For sure. Uh, at least he's not funny. missing out on like he he might miss out on something later, but he already got something, so it's it's not a total. It was like when um oh man, who's the other striker on Miami? Uh he got he got sent off just right before Messi had arrived. Campana, Luis Campana. Uh, I, I think, no. who am I thinking of? He's still there. No, I know that, but they uh, had tri- Carranza. Oh, okay. Yeah. I'm thinking of Carranza. You're right. It was, they, they announced the signing and then it's like, boom, see you later. That would suck. That would suck. That would suck. Okay. Hey, I got the results right here, guys. Let's go over the league results. <laughs> here okay. we go. Minnesota versus Columbus, 1-1, draw, whatever. It's not a big deal. Uh, Real Salt Lake over LAFC, 3-0. Love that. Miami, just like you said, just hammering Orlando, five goals. Uh, that was that, the, If you haven't seen those highlights, go watch it. It's it's great, man. It's it's fun soccer. It's just, it's just old reminiscent highlights of what you would see out of Europe. Uh, Vancouver versus Charlotte, draw, 1-1. Uh, Cincinnati over Chicago, 2-1. Montreal over Dallas, 2-1. Love that. Anytime FC Dallas loses. Uh, New York, Red Bulls, uh, 2-1 over Houston. Love that as well. I think they're going to be dangerous this year, the Red Bulls. Yeah. Mm Okay. Emil Emil Forsberg is a a very big incoming player that's not going to get as much attention. But that guy's good. Yes. Big fan. Okay. You know who's who's not looking good after two games? Oh, 
Houston. Yeah, you can make the the argument of multiple competitions right now. Herrera being out, we'll see. But but even in, even in Champions Cup, I feel like they they didn't they didn't they didn't look like the team they were last year. I'll it's because they don't have Corey Baird, man. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Baird. Uh, okay, Philadelphia and Kansas drawing one one. Two which, teams to look over. So, which uh, I will say, SKC did kind of get screwed in that one. Elaborate by, by some poor yeah, officiating. So- mm-hmm. There, there was the the basically what led to the goal should have been a it, it was out right on Philadelphia and or yeah, but they called it out on SKC and it led up to the goal. Yeah, just poor officiating. Okay, yeah, poor of poor referees. Rest. Uh, St. Louis over New York City FC, 2-0. Uh, Colorado drawing with Nashville, 1-1. So a uh, little concerning. No, no. I watched that game. Um, Colorado's goal was an own goal on Shaq Moore for Nashville. And then Nashville equalized on a boneheaded handball from Jonathan Lewis of Colorado. So. Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah. That, that and you have no Hany Mukhtar. Um, Walker Zimmerman wasn't playing. Yeah, I th- I think if you have a healthy Nashville, just from what I've seen, like highlights wise, I think Nashville could have taken that one. Mm. I just remember the matchup where it was like Mukhtar versus Messi, and they were like trying to make it like Mukhtar was this incredible player uh, last season um, or last competition, whatever that competition was. Yeah. But what did they win? What did the Inter Miami win? League Cup. Cup. Yeah. That's right. I should know that. Um, Portland and DC 2 2. And then uh, LA Galaxy, my favorite Los Angeles team, uh, 3 1 over San Jose. Can we talk yeah. about how LA Galaxy might be good this season? They're, they are going to be good this season. They looked they looked great against San Jose. Pencil oh. is scary, bro. Oh, yeah. Hmm. It's, so. it's, awesome. it's awesome to see that they actually are playing fun soccer for, for a change. I can't yeah. remember the last time I saw a fun LA Galaxy team. And they yeah. might be well, when Zlatan played. Zlatan, bro. That was the funnest that team's <laughs> ever been, bro. I don't know. The Robbie Keane version was pretty great. But were they – Zlatan might have been fun, but were they good? No, no. no but it was fun. Know. Zlatan was just <laughs> getting in highlights. Yeah, that was fun. I, I think the Galaxy might be able to, uh, to handle LAFC this year. I think so. Yeah, they better. They better. Dude, uh, the Robbie Keane, man, forever, that freaking celebration, dude, it's always in my mind, bro. You remember when Beckerman did it? No. Uh, yeah, did he? Was... The, was it the Cowboy Guns? Like, did he put the jersey over? Or oh, yeah. He, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah. Real good. That was awesome. Um, And then you got Seattle, Austin, 0-0 draw. And then you've got Toronto over New England, 1-0. So, uh, collectively kind of looking over this, um. Comparing it to last season, it is it, so strange, man. I feel like there's always a reset on seasons. But uh, what I care about most is Real Salt Lake and, you know, how we're looking. Obviously, we went to Miami, lost. Uh, we went to St. Louis afterwards, uh, draw, and then we finally pick up a win. So we're, I can't remember the orders, like 0 one one or one one zero, whatever it might be. Uh, one 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 one, my bad. Yeah, okay, brains fried. <laughs> but <laughs> yeah, there you, that yeah, you're right. One one one. <laughs> so uh, if we are looking just at the start of how we're kicking the season off, and obviously we 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 went into great lengths to uh, express our Miami opinions. I have to say, I'm pretty happy with where we are. Are you guys pretty happy with where we are? Yeah, yeah. So far, so good. Honestly, like the the the, the Colorado Vancouver stretch is going to be more of a gauge as to where we're at, in my opinion. Mm. Right. Mm-hmm. I think speaking, I think I think technically, like you, I, like I said, you have to get the win against Colorado, but for, uh, this team always struggles in Vancouver. We did win. We get. We did get the win last year, but historically, Vancouver is not kind to Real Salt Lake, and so it's just going to be about 
what Josh said, building on the performances and carrying that into the next game and continuing to just kind of play with that little that little bit of confidence that this team has at the moment. And with that, have a great night, everybody. Goodbye. <laughs> hang on, hang on, hang on real quick. Colorado coming to town. Feeling pretty good about it. Let's go over predictions. Uh, what are our predictions and where do we think goals are going to come from? You know I hate predictions because I feel like I'm going to jinx it, right? Yeah, but you know what, dude? We're not doing that this season. You're not. Oh, yeah. No, wait. What's reverse. our chant? What's our chant? Uh, it was it was actually pretty. Well, oh, go ahead, Alex. You got something to say? No, no, no. I was just putting my hand in so we could do the chant. Oh, we, we believe in Real Salt Lake. We are the best team in the Rockies. We're we will make the playoffs. We will. Whatever. Win. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we handle Colorado. Like I, I'm feeling in my insides like a 4-1. Oh, this is great. This is great, dude. You know what? I think you've been holding us back, Josh, all these years because you've been doing the reverse, right? Like you're always like, oh, I don't want to jinx it. But now we're breaking those curses. And now... For the first time ever, dude, you've actually given us a prediction of what you want. I've got chills, dude. Are this they multiplying? Crazy. Yeah. <laughs> Are you I'm losing like, control? Yeah. like I feel like you're probably disgusted with yourself, but this is a step in the right direction because we're manifesting, yeah. guys. This is the yeah, I'm feeling electrified right now. Yes. Yes. 4-1. Wow. All right. So... You can't tell us where all of the goals are going to come from, but tell us at least where like where two of those are going to come from. Oh, uh, we're going to get a we're going to get a Crooks opener. He's going to open his account. Mm. Um, I think we're going to get a center back goal, mm-hmm. whether it be a free kick or header. Okay. <laughs> Vera, that's that's you. Um, I think Gomez adds another to his tally, and I think Chicho sneaks one in. Wow, damn. Uh, cool. I love, dude. I love that, Alex. Prediction. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go with a three nil, just mm. back to back three nil wins, mm. and of course Chicho's gonna score. He's gonna continue his his scoring streak, and I am I do think Crooks Crooks finally opens up his scoring. The third so one well? will probably be Diego Luna because I think he's due for one. Yeah. The Crooks goal, I are we envisioning like a screamer of a goal? Like just like a, a, a hit outside laces, ball curving, dip. No, no, I think it's going to be more like uh, Gomez's second goal against LAFC where a nice little layoff to the top of the box and he just puts a nice little tidy finish in. Love that. Okay, I like that. Maybe a header on a corner. I'd like, okay. I'd like to see a Crooks goal come from like a, just a scramble in the box, breakaway, keepers like on the floor trying to get a save, and he just does like a little chip over the keeper. Doesn't have to be close, but just kind of chips it, kind of floats it over. Just a nice finish. It's a little doink. Yeah, and I want to see him running out with both arms extended to he's gonna run to the former Crylock corner with arms extended. Should we call that the the crook's treehouse corner or something? <laughs> nah, dude, that's forever going to be the cryolog corner, man. Cemento. He can have the opposite corner then, the treehouse corner. Yeah, he can have the tree, the treehouse corner. Cool. Well, guys, let us know what you guys uh, predict um, as far as an outcome. Uh, Lexi, uh, we're in communication with you to try to get you that kit. Congratulations. And Andrew, hold on, hold on. What, what's your prediction? My prediction? Oh, yeah. Oh. Um, I feel like a, I feel like a brace. I think a brace conservatively is good. Like two zero. Um, and you know what? I guess uh, uh, braces is, is the wrong word. Um, because I don't think the goals are going to come from the same source. I, I feel I, I'd like to see a Crooks goal. That'd be really epic. I haven't said I haven't said epic since two thousand nine. That's weird. Um, <laughs> Crooks, and I will say, uh, I'd love to. I'd like to see another Luna goal in this one. Just kind of like to Alex's point, feels like he's due. He's gonna you know deserve. Uh, so that means that we're going to be excluding Chicho. It's kind of hard to not think that we'd see another Chicho goal at home, uh, but I'd say 2-0 with a stretch goal, 3-0 for Chicho. So, yeah, okay. somewhere in there. 
Uh, let us know what you guys' predictions are. Uh, tweet at us. Uh, we don't have any prizes in mind yet, but I'm sure if somebody nails the prediction and you guys go as far as to saying where the goals come from, we'll do something special for you guys. We'll figure something out. If you guys say 3-0 and you guys are like, boom, 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 this player, this player, that player, and it's perfect, we'll do something cool. Not, not team signed kick cool, but something cool. <laughs> All right, if you guys have enjoyed this show, go leave a review, and we'll see you guys on the next episode of the RSL Show on KSL Sports. Okay, bye. Goodbye. Okay,